a Sunday, we gon' have us one of the guns knives and watches reviews. A subscriber of mine asked me, Hey man, you gonna be flying on one of their airplanes, man, what are you gonna take with you? What's gonna be the basis of your kit? First thing I'd do, I'd go to the TSA. See what they will allow you to pack and this, there, the other, and you can go to a bunch of farms, man. They got them their farms where you can do that shit. But I'm gonna talk to you a little bit. The basis of my airplane kit is going to be around things that I cannot easily obtain. And that's the first question you have to ask yourself. What is it worth me carrying? What am I not going to be able to get? Am I going to be able to come up with a pot, man, out in there in the wilderness of that there urban type environment, man? Because in the wilderness or in the urban type environment, I guarantee you, you can go get a pot. Is it going to be as good as this pot? Probably not. But if this aluminum pot, hard anodized, them there handles, and that there bail, man, <laughs> bowl, pour, spout, man, is important to you, and the ability to topple it over without the lid coming off and everything being, yeah, hard anodized coating and all that crap is important to you, then this may be a good container for the a part of your kit. Now, are you probably going to wind up and your luggage going to be searched and this, that, or the other, and and someone's going to go through it probably because it's metal and it can't be this there or the other and so you could leave everything out of it and uh, just make it easier on everyone else but what are some of the things that i can't cannot get one of the things that you will not probably be able to get very easily are cutting devices and tools like this so my kit basically is going to be very tool heavy. Of course, this is my Falcon even A1, of which people have seen me carry for years. And this is one of my favorite. It has a seven inch blade. And you'll have to excuse the dirtiness and this, there, or the other. But that's just the way it is. You know, you can see I've got my sharpening thing on it. And, uh, but it's a seven inch blade from actually right here, not back here at the handle, right here to the tip. And it works. And then we have the uh, synthetic sheath and all that crap. And we have full tang construction and all that bullshit. A ha hammering pommel, all that shit. Of course, we have our Victorinox Swiss Tool Spirit. I'm not going to go on about that. And we have our Cold Steel Recon 1. Do we give a shit that it doesn't fit our hand as well as some other knives? No, because when we're flying, the only thing that is important is the ultimate strength and the ability of these tools to do work nothing else matters you can get real fucking comfortable real quick with your kit if it works and is the ultimate at what it does as far as a folding knife i would say for the money right now hundred dollars this is the ultimate folding knife this is the ultimate tool in my book because it does not rust this is that carpenter tool steel whatever the hell it is and this is a falcon even which is laminated seven inch blade okay awesome so we have possibly a pot but i'm going to talk to you about something else when you are flying is the cost of the things you are going to not be able to get when you get there easily matter hell the fuck no then you can throw in dumb shit like this this titanium Keith canteen heavy cover and all that shit and the canteen cover lid and this, that, or the other. Why? Because this son of a bitch will do a lot of work. You, are, you flew somewhere in the continental United States or somewhere else and you got through the TSA and as long as you don't have fluid in this son of a bitch, you can do it. You know, you can even walk on a plane with this thing. Hey, as long as it doesn't have fluids in it, go to the water fountain, get you a drink, buddy. Fill it up. Then, when you're flying... The cost of this, or the cost of this, or the cost of this, and this, and this other shit goes out the window. Because you are going far away from home, and the amount of work these tools will individually do becomes extremely important.
Okay, so options like this become $150, become perfectly sane in an environment to where you are far away from home, you need to do a lot of work, and they need to be the ultimate at what they do. It does not matter what it costs. I'm going to give you another prime example. Here is 750 paracord. No, did I say 550? No, I said 750. This is the heavy duty shit, military grade, da 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 da, military issue and used, okay? It will take 750 pounds, test weight. All of your string better be that, okay? I'm not going to tell you this, there, or the other, that, oh, 550 will work, bullshit. You're on a fucking plane, you are far away from home, you better get the best. Rock out with your cock out. Now, we're going to talk about some other shit. Another good thing is your backpack. I'm not going to throw a backpack here. You know what my recommendations for backpacks usually are. It revolves around something Kelty uh, or something Kelty. I don't know. I've tried to work with a lot of other brands. I've tried to work with a lot of other shit. But as far as a heavy duty, are they lightest backpacks? No. Do they make some really good backpacks? Yes, they do. It might revolve around something very small. But, you know, we're good. we got pocket knife, multi-tool. Big, 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 we got a big, 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 big man. Stainless steel, man. We got a canteen, water container, cup, cap. We got some cordage, man. We're going through the, the, the seas of survivability, man. <laughs> yeah, baby. And you can go through the uh, 10 seas or 5 seas or whatever the hell it is, and you can rock out, man. Of course, maps, compasses, your first aid kit becomes very important in this type of situation. A compass, of course, becomes very important because you're not uh, using your normal means of uh, just, hey man, you ain't got no normal type reference as far as what is north, what is south, and this, that, or the other, and in cloud covered type situation which nothing ever goes bad in the sunny day. That's like nothing ever goes bad to me when I'm on vacation. That's why the kit that I show on television, on the video, is my imaginary kit because it's when I'm on vacation with my kids, everything is controlled or I'm moving from one house to another house or I'm doing, you know, going my way to work or back, which is moving from one house to the other house or any of the other shit that I do. I mean, nothing ever goes wrong at that time because everything is optimized because I have my entire family in the car. Shit goes wrong when I'm by myself. No one's around, and there's no one to help me. <laughs> there's no one to hear you scream, man. Another big part of your kit, of course, your backpack, your clothing. You have to take your, all your clothing into account. Every piece of clothing has to be optimized for your ability to travel. And you have to take into account of things, extra underwear, extra socks, extra shirts, uh, so that you can change them every day, because once they get moist, once they get wet, that starts to soften your skin, you start to chafe, you start to blister, you start to have problems. Soft skin is bad. Okay. And we've talked, did I say enough about the first aid kit? You can go through one of my first aid kit videos or go through some of the things that are in my first aid kit from some of the other videos and start, you know, putting together whatever works for you. But let's get into something that's really important. Besides these things that we can't put together, let's put together, man, something else. We're going to talk about that there money. Moolah, do re mi fa so, man. Woohoo! And here's what we're going to talk about alternate forms of currency because everybody can get cash. Everybody has, of course, credit cards, which you can use this there, the other, da 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 da. Cash is, is pretty usable, though. <laughs> I like having a lot of cash on me when I'm out of town. Of course, this makes you a risk of being robbed, so you have to put it in other places. I never keep much money in my wallet. Uh, I keep it in other places, other areas, da da da, da and it's what I've always done since, uh, man, I you know, started hanging out in Germany when I was a kid, because I watched pickpockets in the malls uh, make a lot of mola, do worry me. But let's talk about their, that their alternate type currency type situation. And this is 100 ounce uh, 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 silver bar, man. This is a thousand some dollars, okay? You would be a moron to carry this. So when we're talking about alternate type currencies, we are not talking about things like this, man. Hunter Troy Ants, man. But here's the deal. We could be talking about a few silver coins, uh, but a few silver coins have limited application, a limited usability, and limited value. Basically, a silver coin to me is basically a chicken, uh, is what I would value it at uh, when I'm in a survival situation. Silver coin, I'll trade you a silver coin for your chicken. We're rocking out. 
which comes out to be 20 whatever $20 um, but this is an alternate form of currency because each one of these little gold bars is no longer a chicken like we have here it is a hundred ounce silver bar or more you know you have to take that into account man uh, but might be less might be more depends on markets depends on your situation what I consider each one of these bars being in my mind uh, giving up some commission to the person that's having to accept them is basically around a thousand dollars eleven hundred dollars if you you know find the right person at the right moment or maybe more depending on what you're trading for so we basically have four thousand plus dollars there and then in these which weigh the same as that okay two of these weigh the same as that we basically have forty dollars so would you rather carry forty dollars or would you rather carry two thousand dollars that's something a choice you have to make now of course cash cash is always king but you can always go to banks and because I spent a lot of time in Europe in my ute um, because I was a ute around walking around Europe um, because you know dad was always in meetings and this there the other and all that other crap did have a bodyguard though but um, I tend to deal in Swiss things I tend not to deal in American stuff these are Swiss gold bars, Pamp Swiss, da 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 da, this, that, or the other. Plus, if you had to, you could delaminate these from their containers and shove them up your ass. And that's, you know, not too wide. Uh, this would be a little bit harder to get up your butt if you had to in a hostage situation or you think you are about to be in a hostage situation. You could basically store those. And I guess I come up with this, that, or the other, but I, I'm used to people being taken hostage and stripped down all out of their clothing and it would be nice to have four gold bars in a hostage situation um, you might be able to extricate yourself you may be able to do things you may be able to do a lot of different things this there or the other and uh, you know you just never know cash is king money counts whenever you're in that situation but anyway these are a few things that uh, I believe have some type of value and anything else that's like well would you carry that there fire what kind of fire device you gonna carry man well you know I can buy big lighters real pretty easy uh, if they will allow me to carry a ferro rod I'll carry a small ferro rod uh, if they will allow me of course my first aid kit is my first aid kit my backpack is my probably my carry-on and uh, the map 3500 would probably be a little big but you know I'd, I would have something that, that would do a lot of work. Uh, the the Kelty Peregrine, which everyone who's ever uh, walked through uh, anything has, uh, and it's the only time I ever get called out, um, you know, is a great pack. It's got an internal frame, a rod, uh, fiberglass rod frame, this, there, or the other, and da, 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 da. Um, and, of course, your clothing and Da, 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 da. And a tarp, uh, some type of coverage. I went over those tarps in my previous videos. The one that I have that I bought, uh, I bought, I think it was 10 by 7. I guess if I was in a, that would be a great one. A guide 10 by 7 would be a great individual tarp to have. Um, and they're about 70 bucks. And they, they weigh, don't weigh very much. They weigh about 16 ounces or a pound. And that would probably be a really good weight to have. You could buy the heavier version, which is actually camouflaged, but it's a lot heavier material. Uh, man, I forget what it is. You could go back to some of my previous videos, but that would probably be a great suggestion. What I'm basically saying is the value of the things that you have in your pit kit are how much work they will do. Uh, when you are far away from home, the thing that really matters is your, one, ability through the backpack to blend in, and two what type of tools you have to do a lot of work because you're going to have to be doing it and then what type of money as far as alternate money supplies uh, i.e. you are in a situation uh, in you know sub-saharan africa where you have to extricate yourself and the only way you can do it very easily is with gold or you are in some type of situation where there's uh, you know a problem and uh, you can you can usually uh, 
figure out a way out of it. But I deal in very, I deal in asymmetrical situations, so uh, this is just kind of the way I think. Anyway, this is Guns, Knives, and Watches, and uh, leave the silver at home. Gold, gold. Have a good one.